In Spanish, my name is Eugenio Riverol, which in, in English probably is easier to pronounce like Eugenio, <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever you guys want to call it. It's, it's fine. But so, um, so I'm, I'm uh, a CEO and co-founder of a company called That's Why, which is a, a big data analytics firm. Uh, we basically collect data throughout Latin America and then we build different data and analytics products for advertising companies, for urban planning companies and agencies for governments and for large mapping and, and, and yeah, mapping platforms like Google Maps and, and, and all the infotainment uh, systems such as Tesla and, uh, and Volvo. So, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit more, on, that's what the company does today, a little bit more on the, on the, on my background and, and, and more than glad to jump in into more detail on what that's why, uh, does. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, originally an industrial engineer. I didn't uh, really got much into 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 engineering uh, per se uh when i was back doing my bachelor's i started out the, the, the company that's why i was in my last year of, of, of college uh, so around you know uh, quite some time 13 14 years ago and um you know i i i, I come from that uh, uh engineering background but um uh, uh, as I said, I started a company back then. I've uh, been learning about technology and data analytics ever since. So, so you know, uh, um, uh, fun fact, I used to, I'm, I'm also a musician. So uh, back back in the day, even back when I was in college, I, I used to uh, play in a, in a, in a, in a band uh, back in Mexico City. We, we even released a couple of records and, 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 and opened up a couple of concerts to major artists back then. So, so uh, you know, I had my, Five minutes of pre-fame. No, the, 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 those weren't even fame minutes, but pre-fame. Uh, but so yeah, so I started the company. Uh, I've been growing the company ever since from a small operation in, in Mexico City. Now we're serving 14, 15 countries throughout the region and, and traveling more, uh, which has its good and, and bad thing. Uh, and well, excited to be here. I mean, I can jump into a little bit more detail on the challenges, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship and technology entrepreneurship, particularly in emerging regions, which has its particularities uh, or, or anything that Ralph, you or, or the students might, might think it'd be better to, yeah. to jump in. We have some student questions. Can we just jump right into some of those? Perfect. So from rock star to tech mogul. So some of these uh, <laughs> questions are actually about your background. Uh, one of the kids wanted to know, how did you transition from an engineering background to becoming a uh, co-founder of your company? Yeah, so, so I mean, I, I'm a big believer, of, you know, on, on, on being very intentional about things and, 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 and you know, like being very conscientious on, on that. But to be quite honest, in, 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 I mean, in this case, you know, the opportunity came up when I was back in college. Uh, uh, my now co-founder, which back then was my, my, uh, my, my teacher in college, uh, he's now the president of the board and CEO of the company, approached me when I was on, 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 uh, on college and he said like, you know, I think there's an opportunity to use technology to solve uh, problems and, and, and challenges on, you know, uh, the geo behavior of people and, and, and using that to create data products. So back then, I mean, that was kind of the initial spark and he said like, you want to, you know, explore it together and, 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 you know, I suggest what I would say to go a little bit more in, 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 into the, into the why is, uh, you know, I think entrepreneurship, even, you know, whether it's coming from engineering or marketing or economics and jumping into actually creating a company, I think it has to do a lot with kind of the, you know, your personal profile and your personal interests. In my case, I think, you know, coming from the background, for example, of music, music taught me a lot, a lot about entrepreneurship, right? Of, you know, learning from learning how to play a song where you had a goal and then you 
learn to do, you know, a, a path and, a, and, a, and, a, and an action plan and then do it and actually get there. I think that's something that you that you go there. So, so the transition wasn't that difficult to me because uh, I mean it was kind of uh, more on my on my soft skills, you know, to to like to create things and to go after after different sets of challenges. And particularly industrial engineering is a it's a very uh, versatile uh, you know uh, career because it kind of gives you a full understanding of usually how an organization a set of processes work. So I mean, it wasn't that much of a of a leap right back then. Uh, definitely now. I mean, what I'm doing now definitely feels like a larger leap. And you know, when back then I didn't think I, I would, you know, have this level of understanding of machine learning models, right? But but that's something that you know grew grew, grew as, as 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 the company developed. So I I think that's kind of 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 how it went for me. And 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 you know, the important component kind of of the of the personal of the personal drive in my case you know even back then even when i was in high school i don't know why but i was kind of i always had in my mind that i i didn't necessarily want to go like the typical path and i didn't i wasn't very excited or looking forward to working like at a large corporation i kind of wanted to beat at the at my own drum right my my on the town of my drum so kind of i think that's that's part of what helped back then can you talk to the kids a little bit about um the common mistakes entrepreneurs make and uh, the main things to look out for when when starting a business. Yeah, so so you know, uh, I don't know if, if if you guys have heard this 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 day, this fact, but, but it, it said that more or less ninety percent of, of of startups fail, right? Of new companies fail. So I mean, if you guys are ever looking into entrepreneurship and and, and you find yourself two or three uh, years into the company. Uh, you know, first of all, know that you are already a, an outlier, right? So entrepreneurship in general, I think it, it, it's it's worshipped, to be honest, in the media a lot for the wrong reasons. Because we look at the Mark Zuckerbergs and we look at the Steve Jobs, and, and that's of course exciting. And and, and, and in no way I, I I I'm saying this in the sense of like lower, you know, like recommending you to lower your your expert expectations. But but the truth is, entrepreneurship is much more than you know being that unicorn or that one company. Which one again, once again, it's 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 also awesome you guys want want to do that. But so it's it's kind of being worshipped in that, right? And 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 the reality is, entrepreneurship is is about you know being passionate about about solving a problem and about creating something that that doesn't exist. And and, and the and the passion and satisfaction comes from doing that. So. Uh, one of the most common is I, I say all of this because one of the most common mistakes out there, and sometimes it's related to to kind of wanting to to jumpstart or to to uh, uh, you know to to fast forward to to what actually means being a unicorn is that uh, in 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 Mexico uh, we 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 call this that you put the cart uh, in front of the horse, right? So so what this means is a lot of the times. 90% of the companies fail and a, a very important uh, uh, number of the times it's because, you know, the, the entrepreneur, the company has created something that the market isn't actually looking for or the, mac the, the market doesn't really need or want, right? And I, I tell you that that's one of the main, main, main problems in entrepreneurship. I've made those mistakes several times, so I'm not saying this be out of the book. I, I've made the mistakes and learned it the hard way. But a lot of the times, you know, from your couch, it seems like, you know, there is a problem or that there is a business opportunity somewhere. And if you don't really understand the market and the customer and the user, a lot of them, at the times you're going to make that mistake, right? So the most, in my opinion, the most common mistake and the most important aspect of launching a company is understanding a real case of a real customer that has a real problem and to which your solution actually works. Let me illustrate this with a very uh, simple example. Back, then, back in the day, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, I was very confident that we could help municipalities in Mexico to actually plan better, you know, plan, improve their urban planning, right? And, and we had a, we have, and we have back then a lot of data around, for example, how people were moving, traffic congestion, you know, the origin and destination of the people throughout the, the city. And in my mind, that made total sense. And on paper, it made total sense. Even my board, which nowhere in my board were actually in the, in the industry. Um, so in paper, it made a lot of sense, of sense. We spent, I don't know, three, four months, you know, developing a business model, a, a pilot project, a software. And, and, and then when, when we went there and we presented actually to, to one of the uh, majors, 
the, the, yeah, the, one of the mayors of the of, of one of the main cities in the country. He he stared at me and he said, "You know, that's amazing." But did you know that ninety percent of the decisions uh, around infrastructure are done at the federal level? So I mean, and and, and it's it's kind of a, a, a very specific example, but I, I want to illustrate illustrate to you guys because it really is one of the of the main aspects of 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 of, of where entrepreneurship plays. Right? If you don't actually understand the customer and what the customer can do and how the customer does it and how the customer can improve. And that, that's that's fundamental, right? So, so that'd be my number one uh, advice for all of you uh, to really understand what what you're doing. And 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 just let me give you one disclaimer: this doesn't mean that you can't create something. I mean that 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 the market doesn't expect or doesn't know. If you think 10, 12 years ago, you know there, there weren't a lot of people thinking about Uber, and 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 you weren't sitting in your homes like saying. God, I can't believe how is there not an app where I can order a taxi? To, to be honest, it wasn't the pain we were aware of, but it was a pain there, or there was an opportunity once you had that alternative, right? So, so Henry Ford used to say that that he didn't like to to ask his customers what they wanted because they would have asked for faster horses, right? So, so the market might not know what they don't know, but it's important to understand that actually what the actual problem is. And what you can do to solve it, right? So I, I'd say that's that's the main 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 uh, challenge and, and and mistake, you know. That there's there uh, that, that's out there. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you're anticipating where the market's going and kind of uh, evolving with it. We have a couple more student questions. We'll let you go because we know uh, you're strapped for the time. Well, no, 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 no late for, for some markets too. This is uh, Guillaume, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Guillaume is in. France, and you should be able to unmute uh, to ask your question. Uh, yes. Uh, at what point did you know that your company was going to work? That's, I think, a great question. Uh, to be honest, I think every entrepreneur uh, wonders that uh, once in a while, uh, even though you know the company might be growing, right? Uh, but there are a couple of, of, of I think, of, of like eureka moments where you start to think that you have something that might work. Uh, but I want to be, you know, you know, very transparent with you guys in terms of, of the path of entrepreneurship. I sometimes, you know, I, I sometimes wonder that today, right? And not in the sense that, oh my God, we're going to have to close. We don't have money to pay, you know, wages tomorrow. But yes, in the sense of saying, does this actually make sense? I mean, is there... Uh, are we doing things the way we're supposed to do to be doing them? Are we really taking over the market? So, so having said that, uh, you know, for for me, uh, I, I tell you the two 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 key moments, right? So the first one is maybe the more simple one, but we started out uh, more more on the on the organic growth and bootstrap size company with a little bit of funding, but I mean, we didn't have you know millions of dollars or something like that. We did, you know, with a couple of sales and a couple of, of angel investments, had some money in the bank. So, I mean, the first one is you have a team, right? To create a company, you hope you're starting to 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 create a business. And usually, in, in our case, for example, I mean, we started with, uh, you know, uh, with with more expenses than than income. You know, the first the first months, even a few years, right? So, for me, the the first moment where I said, okay, so we have something here is the moment that actually the organic growth of the company. Allowed us to, you know, to, 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 to survive without needing external capital because it meant that somehow, you know, we were creating more value than we, than, than we were taking. So that's the first moment, you know, when you have a cash sustainable business. And the second one, which to be honest is even more interesting is we, we developed, uh, products for different industries. So in our case, we tested out to be honest, we have tested out throughout these 12 to 14 years, a lot of industries. But, uh, the moment I, I, I you know, I started to, to have, the same type of conversation and actually being able to close the same type of deal with more than four or five customers in an industry, that's the moment you, you know, you say, okay, so we're onto something, right? So looking for that traction, uh, where you have this replicability of a product and a sales process and an operational process. Uh, I think that's it. That's the other important one. And, and, and I'd really, you know, recommend to you guys, if you're ever looking into entrepreneurship, uh, to, to, you know, think about, think about it under, under that frame. Um, so before we let you go, um, is there any advice that you could give to these kids as they go off into the world and figure out what kind of industry or career they, they would like to pursue? Definitely, Ralph. So, um, 
I think that you know, I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm definitely older than you guys. I'm uh, 37 years old, so so uh, uh, I, I know there's a gap there. But but it it, it wasn't that long ago that I was uh, kind of where, where you're at right now. And, and the first thing I, I want to say is, you know, it's it's very challenging to you know be 20, 22, 23 years old and 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 have kind of to decide what you want to do the rest of your life, right? And even you you made that first choice at eighteen when you decided where to go to college and, and what to major in. But uh, my 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 main advice there would be you know uh, if you guys have uh, a lot of clarity on where you want to go then you know just do it and, and and start testing but go into that with an open mind right because whatever you think you know about an industry or a type of job even if you dreamt about being an architect you guys probably i mean don't really know how that life looks like so so that's the first one so so but but if you have a clarity jump in test it out i mean i tested out music right i wanted to be a rock star uh there's a whole other story there but but I, I tested it out, right? And I, and I got to see the, the, the good and the bad. And now, in, in retrospective, I, I think I learned more than, 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 than back then I thought. So the first one is, if you know, go for it. If you don't know, guys, and if you're not quite sure what industry or what type of role you want to go into, my advice, uh, and I recognize this might be biased, but my advice would be, well, go work for a startup company or go work for a, for a consultancy company. And, and why? Because... If you go work for a consultancy company, you're going to be able to know a lot of, and I don't really, I, I would never be a consultant, by the way, uh, but, but uh, you might be able to know a lot of different industries. You might be able to understand the different aspects of different industries and markets. So that's an interesting uh, aspect of, 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 of entering the, the, the market, the job market in the consultancy layer. In the startup world, which is something I, I love, I'm passionate about. I mean, it's very, very fun and, 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 and high uh, uh, energy is uh, in the startup world, you're going to really learn how to do a lot, right? You're going to learn to do different roles. You're going to learn what our company is. You're going to learn how, to, you know, what the types of challenges that, that you face uh, in actually, you know, in, 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 in different roles and in different moments of a company. And I think that's very enriching as a, as a learning experience at the at the beginning. And you're gonna be able to after a while, and a while it could be you know two or three years, not that long, to really build a lot of skills that will be useful in very different roles. Even if you then want to transition into the more corporate world or the more structured world, right? So I mean, my my advice would be if you don't really know what you guys are looking for, and and that's that's perfectly fine, and that's totally normal. Is Kind of to go into some into somewhere where you can maximize the opportunities to learn, to test different types of roles, to test different types of industry, to know different types of people, right? And be this is that so so you know those would be my 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 my, my two main components of the advice. And just let me tell you, this is something that I didn't do back then. I, I you guys are probably gonna hear it, and most of you are gonna say, yeah, that makes sense. But then you're gonna forget this that I'm about to say, but. Try to be guys a little bit more intentional on 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 those choices, and 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 what I mean there is try to be more present and more aware of what you want to learn and take from those first couple of years. Uh, a lot of us, you know, I think you know we once again. I mean, it's not that long ago. I was twenty two or twenty three. You kind of go through the motions, right? And 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 if you are you know committed, you do a lot of effort, but you're not maybe that intentional of saying, okay, what do I want to learn here? Because if you're a little bit more intentional, that might lead you to, for example, reaching out to a, an executive director of a company you're working at and saying, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to help you with that. Uh, I want to work on this. I want to lead a project like this, right? And fail, mess up, you know, within the, the you know, the, the, the frame of actually trying to do the things right. But, but I think that that's something that if you guys do that, if you guys are intentional on that, uh, I can assure you two things. The first one is, uh, you're going to be ahead of 99% of the people. And the second one, and more, more importantly, you're really going to get the most out of that experience, right? And you're going to be uh, building skills faster and you're going to be discovering yourself faster, right? As you move forward, you're going to start to see also different aspects of life, right? And, 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 and you know, where you work is, is, is your main of one of your main, aspect, main aspects of your life, right? So, so getting that sense into what you are doing, why you're doing it, what you like and what you don't like is, is fundamental. For example, I, I tell you, I mean, I work a lot. It's my company. I really work a lot of hours. But uh, 
you know, I, I, I know that I really value my freedom, right? And I might be working a, a Sunday evening, but I know if uh, Tuesday I want to go to my daughter's recital, I can do that, right? And that's for me, in my particular case, something important. That's something that this type of, of job and company and work allows me to do. So if you that intention, also you're going to be understanding you know, what the trade-offs are of each position, each company, each industry. And that's something that if you find that, that how that uh, you know sooner rather than later, I think you you're gonna have a uh, you know a, a, in general a better life. <laughs> Just, uh, I can't thank you enough, and it sounds like you you push a lot about prioritizing, um, it, which is a great great message, um, especially when you have families involved and stuff like that. And guys, we'll have more about that's why in a little in a little bit. I'll put it uh, in the uh, video. Uh, but before I let you go, Eugenio, oh, uh, no hurries. I am going to unmute everybody and uh, before I end the meeting for all, and can we all say thank you to Eugenio for taking the time to speak to you guys today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank